Hey kids, do you like world dominating corporations? Then boy howdy, have I got some synergy for you. See, back in the long, long ago of 2009, a little mouse run shop by the name of the Walt Disney Company acquired another, more muscle bound group by the name of Marvel Entertainment for $4 billion. Here's 15 Disney Easter eggs and hidden references in the MCU, I guess. One of the most haunting uses of a Disney reference occurs in Age of Ultron, and even made the trailer. No strings on me. This is of course the song I've Got No Strings from the 1940 Disney classic Pinocchio, another film about a man-made puppet given sentience with admittedly a little less worldwide destruction, but he did survive getting swallowed by a whale and getting turned into a donkey. Jesus. Little guy was pretty hardcore, all said and done. I had strings, but now I'm free. Of course, one of the most famous and memed references, sort of an Easter egg in plain sight for all the little kids to pick up, uh, if we're taking the analogy way too far. I don't want to see this on your MySpace page. Is the Mary Poppins gag in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, in which Peter Quill refers to Yondu as a Mary Poppins-esque figure due to how he floats down via killer psychically guided arrow and, well, dude rolls with it. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all! Rip, rip. In Ant-Man, during the break-in of PIM Technologies, Luis whistles, It's a Small World, from the Disney ride, It's a Small World. Uh, oh, fun fact, by the way, that I learned by um, just, you know, being a person who sits around and Googles all day. The song was created for the 1964 to 1965 New York World's Fair in support of UNICEF. And when you consider the implications of the song, that it's all about people joining hands and working together, yeah, makes sense. No, don't whistle. No whistling, it's not the Andy Griffith show. That Luis is whistling this while being part of a team effort is just, mwah. It's a chef's kiss. I had the hat on. Another bit of musical reference reverie comes in the form of Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings karaoke sequence in which Sean and Katie sing a whole new world from Aladdin. Gosh, this one kind of sucks, doesn't it? Um, okay, uh, all right. Bonus entry, uh, in the Halloween episode of WandaVision, there's a theater marquee with the parent trap and the Incredibles showing. Both Disney properties. Hey, hey, hey. It's all, I'm not sure that made it better. Let's move on. Uh, over to Iron Man 2. Uh, not only does the Stark Expo seem awfully similar to the Disney Expo, uh, but Papa Stark's City of Tomorrow video is basically just Walt Disney's Epcot video. Actually, um, it's, it's kind of crazy to think about how much a property at this point officially owned by Disney kind of just lampoons them. Circling back around to high quality memes, this is one I'm sure you've used in GIF form on Twitter multiple times. I, I understood that reference. But what reference does Cap understand? To know how Loki used it to turn two of the sharpest men I know into his personal flying monkeys. Yep. Wizard of Oz, baby. Now, this one is a bit of a cheat because technically Warner Brothers owns the film The Wizard of Oz while the books are public domain, but Disney has made two Oz films, the nightmare-inducing Return to Oz <laughs> and the sleep-inducing Oz the Great and Powerful. So is this a Disney reference? Should I be saying GIF instead of JIF? Who cares? I'm what wrestling fans call a heel so I can do basically whatever I want. Those crows just say we're gonna die? Anywho, uh, in the Avengers, Tony Stark has this line. What just happened? Please tell me nobody kissed me. Of course, this is a reference to Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, in which it takes true love's kiss to awaken the sleeping princess. In twisted clickbait logic, this means Tony Stark is in fact a Disney princess. Let's get our writers on this, guys, come on. Boom, boom, boom. As for the rando creeping on sleepy chicks in the woods, you know, maybe don't read too much into that. For the sake of my own sanity and the fact that I just made a separate video about Star Wars references in the MCU, I'm not including that particular franchise in this list. However, other Disney-owned properties are certainly up for grabs, and that goes doubly 
for Pixar films. WALL-E, the beautiful story of two robots and the inevitable fall of man to capitalist greed, is referenced in the best Iron Man movie, Iron Man 3. We are not arguing about this uh, with this particular line. Dummy. Hi, dummy. There is one Star Wars reference that actually doubles as a traditional Disney reference. You know that part? Where they're on the snow planet? Yeah. This sequence from Captain America Civil War is obviously inspired by Empire Strikes Back, but the way Giant Man is taken down is pulled straight from the Disney short film Brave Little Taylor. Also in Civil War, we get this line. Who's speaking? It's your conscience. We don't talk a lot these days. That's, uh... That's just a really straightforward pull from Binding Nemo. I've got nothing else to, to say about it. Here's a cool one. The placement of Ant-Man's little hand button thingies, you know, these little guys, that control shrinking and growing match up with the pieces of mushroom that help Alice shrink and grow in Alice in Wonderland. Now, when I went to nab a clip for this segment, I noticed a video by NerdSync that goes a few steps further and suggests that this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's also the concept of shrinking out of existence, the trial by water moment, and the theme of following your curiosity. Good stuff. And thank you, Nerd Sing, for pointing that out for me. I would not have noticed those things, because I am stupid. Also in Ant-Man, Cassie has a couple toys based on Disney-owned properties, specifically this Sophia the First bucket and a stuffed toy version of Flounder from The Little Mermaid. At least I hope it's a toy. Oh god, that poor fish. See you guys, the jokes can get worse. Back to the break-in at PIM Technologies, Kurt has this line. No alarms have been triggered, he's in like the Flint. Now this is a pretty common phrase, but it could also be a reference to Kevin Flynn infiltrating Incom in Tron. Then again, this could just be the biggest stretch since Plastic Man. I don't know. This next one is less a reference uh, and more probably just coincidence, but did you notice that in Spider-Man Far From Home, Mysterio's plan to use villainy in order to get back at a hero who he feels betrayed him and become the new hero is basically just Syndrome's plan from The Incredibles. I, I mostly just wanted to get a Spider-Man movie on this list, I'll be honest with you here. I call this bluff, sweetheart, that's all. And finally, gotta mention a sort of twofer, Captain America and the, for now, non-MCU Fantastic Four, both of which have the distinction of referring to Chris Evans as Tinkerbell. That's it, Tinkerbell! No, ben, you wanna fly? Ben, ben. Then fly! Nice, nice boots, boots, Tinkerbell! Tinkerbell. And you know what? I'm sure he'll make a great Buzz Lightyear. But also, Chris Evans for Tinkerbell, yo. Come on, let's get this change.org petition signed pronto. Okay, now I'm gonna go kill him. I really wanted to connect the cat from outer space to Captain Marvel. Like, I spent an hour trying my very best, but while it's entirely possible that the Flurkin species, as created in 2006, could have been inspired by that 1978 Disney flick, I don't know, it just seems far-fetched. Man, if Flurkins were dogs, that would, that would actually be a great pun.